you ever wanted to make fake cheese? I know it's a pretty strange question, but maybe you're like me and you work in theatre and you might need fake cheese for a show, like you might be preparing a banquet dinner on stage, maybe you're wanting to do a display piece. Whatever the reason is, you clicked on this video for a reason. So today I'm going to show you three different methods in how to make fake cheese. So if you're keen to see that, then stick around. Be sure to hit the like and subscribe button and the bell next to the subscribe button to stay up to date with all my future uploads. And with all that said and done, let's jump straight into the video. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Jenny and I am That Props Girl. As I said before, today I'm going to be showing you three different methods of how to make fake cheese. Now the first method I'm going to show you today is specific mostly for theatre. And so when we're doing stuff for theatre, we're often thinking about distance. And with a lot of theatre props and costumes and even some set pieces, up close it doesn't always look like the real thing, but from a distance it looks really good. And I'm not joking about this, one of the most common methods, especially one that I use to do fake cheese on like a dinner plate or something like that from a distance. I actually just use sponges and I use the big sponges, the big yellow sponges that you would use to wash your car with and I chop them up into cheese pieces. Now here is one that I've actually cut up before and you can see like it's got all the holes in it there and it may not look like much now but I guarantee you from a distance it actually looks like real cheese and I'll do a little platter here and show you just how it looks from a distance. As I said in theatre you are dealing with a big distance and so an audience member who's sitting far enough away is not going to be able to tell the difference between a sponge and cheese so so long as it looks somewhat like cheese they're gonna get the basic idea of course this is just a entry level uh, sort of prop and this is just your base model if you want to do this I have done it time and time again it really works you can also use normal kitchen sponges and glue them together if you want you can even use magic erasers and paint them the options are endless but these because they already have holes in them make a really good replica cheese piece and the second method that we're going to use today is actually taking some dry floral foam and cutting it up into your cheese shaped triangle now if you have watched my video on making fake cake slices from quite a while ago now and if you want to see me cutting up uh, floral foam and how I do that feel free to check out that video but basically here's one that I prepared earlier now if you want to make this look a little bit more like Swiss cheese or something like that you can take a knife and actually just carve out your little notches and things like that so I'm gonna go ahead and do that now All right, so now that I've gone in and put in some little holes, now we can just take a paddle pop or popsicle stick, pop it in the bottom so that we can hold it, and then I'm gonna mix up some paint and just paint it. Now you may find that that needs a second coat because the foam does tend to absorb the paint a little bit. That is the slight snare with using both sponges and foam, uh, particularly dry floral foam. So just keep that in mind. If you are enjoying this video, be sure to give it a big thumbs up as well as hit the subscribe button and bell to stay notified of whenever I upload. And while you're there, why not leave me a comment down below with what your favorite type of cheese is. Mine is definitely blue cheese. Now my third and final method is a bit more complex and this works both in a theatre setting but also more if you're wanting to have this as a display prop so it is going to look a little bit more realistic and we're going to be using air drying clay today. I'm actually using, I don't know if you can see, I'm actually using a new air drying clay and I've already opened it but I got this one from Bunnings Warehouse in Australia and I haven't tried this one. I'm not quite sure how I feel about this air drying clay yet. I think I'm going to make a few more things with it to make my judgement call on that. So basically what we're going to do here is we're going to take our air drying clay I'm going to take just a normal plastic knife and I'm going to make the outline of a triangle for cheese and now you can use exact measurements I would suggest using exact measurements but I'm just going to do a bit of that and that and measure approximately the same size and then I'm going to cut into the clay so now we're left with two pieces. I'm gonna make them fit as best as we can together. Now I'm gonna put this one on top of this one. I'm gonna press them into each other, but to kind of join them together, I'm just gonna take a little bit of water, dip my fingers in that, 
and then I'm really just going to go along and press and rub in this um, the join there to um, kind of mold the two pieces of clay together. And now I'm going to take this little tool which is for baking and you can use anything that's kind of pointed if you don't have a baking tool and I'm just going to press and make some little holes because I want this to be Swiss cheese and actually I really should be using the other end. Um, like that and you can make smaller ones, bigger ones. Just going to do that all the way over the cheese to make it look, as I said, like Swiss cheese. So you can go ahead and set that aside to dry. Now that can take a couple of days depending on the weather and the temperatures around you. So just keep that in mind. This is one that I prepared earlier. And so I'm going to now paint this. And just like the other one, I'm gonna use a mixture of yellows and then in the actual holes, I'm gonna use a bit of a darker sort of golden color to really give that sort of depth. One last tip, I would just go in and seal the rest of that clay with some Mod Podge just to cure it and make sure that that paint stays in place. I love the way that that last one turned out and it looks so realistic. But there you go, there are three different methods that you can use to make fake cheese. And whether you're using the first or second method, they still look realistic from a distance on stage. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Be sure to stay tuned for next week's video because I'm going to be doing an entire cheese platter out of air drying clay and I'm super excited to give that a try. So be sure to hit the like and subscribe button and the bell next to the subscribe button to stay up to date with all my future uploads. And I will see you guys next time. Bye.